So here we've got our first kitchen invention that never really made it. And I cannot tell you how happy it makes me to think that at some point in history, someone thought that there is a need for a motorized spinning spaghetti fork. The crazy thing about this whole video is that these people actually went forward with the idea. It almost makes me feel sad to judge this in any kind of way. We're still gonna do it. This is the world's probably, most likely, only motorized spaghetti fork. It doesn't come with batteries. The screw on here is really, really small and I don't seem to have anything at home to open it with, so I might just break it. Wait, safety glasses. Oh, that was pretty easy. So we're gonna put the batteries in and we're gonna eat some spaghetti. <laughs> I love it. In order to keep up with my spaghetti eating ways, this is gonna have to be a lot stronger. You're gonna have to move a lot faster than that. If you're Italian and you're watching this video, please leave a mean comment. For once, I deserve it. Actually, I deserve it every time. Okay. The normal way to eat spaghetti is, I only use a fork, I'm not gonna lie. But that's how you do it. I mean, it's pretty easy. Is there really a need for this? So I'm gonna put the fork in and... Is anything happening? Maybe I have to insert it horizontally, so you kind of have to go in and then switch it on. And that's a very small amount of pasta, but I mean... I'm not underwhelmed, I'm not overwhelmed, I'm just whelmed. It's annoying because you have to switch it on, right? And then you have to switch it off in order to eat it. It starts to fall off if you don't switch it off. Well, it doesn't work if you use it horizontally, as you can see. You'd make a mess if you actually had to use this. Just a regular fork. That's pretty easy. And look at the amount of pasta you get. Now using this fork. If the inventors of these gadgets are watching this video, please don't because this is, this is not gonna be nice to your feelings. This is one of the dumbest things ever. I am not surprised why this didn't make it. Even as like a funny joke present to give to someone like on their birthday, it's not funny, it's infuriating, but maybe not everyone takes food as seriously as me. This is a great start for the video. Moving on, the next invention that never really made it is called the burger holder. Once again, very self-explanatory inventions. You might wonder why they didn't really work. I can't even read this with a straight face. Okay, it's time to enjoy your burgers the elegant, the clean way. And then it says patent pending because this is one of those things that someone might try to rip off. Someone who really hates their money. BPA free, oven safe, dishwasher safe. I mean, they clearly thought of everything apart from the fact that there is literally no one in the world who needs this. But I was surprised going on the Amazon page and like, I have to tell you the actual truth. Everyone who's bought this was actually really happy with it. Like not many reviews, but most of them were five star reviews. So I've got a medium sized burger. I think a McChicken is like a good size to try something with because it's a bit messy. It is falling apart a little bit already. I'm not gonna lie, they really thought about it. Like this, it stays pretty like still. They should make GoPro attachments. This stuff, like wow, I should do like a, a stable camera on it. It's pretty impressive. Let's just enjoy our burger. Something is falling apart here. I don't know how that happened, but it is opening up a little bit, but it's so clean in here. I really hate myself here. Nobody in the world hates spending money or wasting money on stupid things more than me. Like it really makes me upset when I spend money on things and it doesn't pay off. This is the full opposite. There's something really clean about it. Like the fact that I don't have to worry about any mess. This is my formal apology to this company. I actually think there is a purpose to this. Most of you already know this, but I've got issues with certain food textures and I'm like a very clean person in general. It could be that there's like a specific type of person for this and I think it might be me. I think this elegant, clean marketing is pretty stupid. I think it would be a lot better if they just marketed this for eating in your car. I think that would be really interesting. Interesting. But I'd be lying to you if I said I'm not keeping it. It might be because being lazy is in my nature But I honestly think this next one is not as pointless as some of the other ones like I can see where they were going This is called stir time. It is time for a revolution in your pan <laughs> The unique automatic stirrer that fits almost in any pan, stirring sauces, soups, and more. If you've ever had to like constantly sit in your pan to stir a soup or a sauce or whatever, this is supposed to do it for you. This is actually looks really cool. Like this must have been expensive. Pretty interesting. Like they really had to put like budget in this. Because of my videos and just in general in my life, I spend a lot of time cooking. I think this one might be, the audience might be me. It's actually really clever because you can fully submerge this in water without 
being electrocuted. If the aliens come to Earth and we had to present them with one device, it would be this. They would be so confused. They'd be like, wow, I love a head scratcher. I hate it, but I love it. Oh, I should have tried that high intensity. Let me try it at high intensity. Is this what they call astral projecting? I don't know what it is, but I'm feeling it. My head feels so weird. Do not try this at home. And this is the first time I ever say that and mean it. That feels really weird. Kind of waiting for this to go away and it's not. Well, my health anxiety is the next gadget we're gonna test out. In order to test this out, I was thinking, what food do I make that needs to be stirred constantly and it always ends up burning if you don't sit there and stir it? I could only think of white sauce, like my mom calls it a bechamel sauce, which is basically for lasagna and pasta and like, foods like that. It's quite a thick sauce and it has flour in it. This is a pre-made one, so I don't know how much flour it's got in it. In order to find out if this is gonna burn or not, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra flour to this sauce because any sauce that has any amount of flour, if you don't stir it, then it's over. It's pretty thick as well, so if this is gonna burn, like we're gonna be able to see it. So I guess we just put this in here. Oh my God. This is genius. I I don't need the rest of the video. This is, I just know. It's like having someone do it for you. Nobody, the ghosts in my house when I go to bed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on a medium to high kind of heat because that's the kind of heat that I would cook this at. And we're gonna leave this on, on medium. Me when I say I'm stirring the pot. I honestly could sit here all day. But anyways, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give it a good seven minutes. That's how long it would take to like cook a bechamel sauce, to, like thicken up, I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to switch this off. I mean, this has thickened up as you can see. This is like the perfect consistency if you're actually gonna use the sauce. And the bottom of it, it cooked the flour and everything to like perfection and I didn't touch it. Like this actually did the whole work for me. We've got a lot to test out, but this is my favorite one so far. I am really, really impressed by this. Design, functionality, five stars for me. This next invention was thought of as an upgrade to an already existing everyday kitchen gadget. This is supposed to be an improved version of a soup ladle. If this works, I think this is a good idea and I'm really confused why this is not the standard for a soup ladle. I would go as far as saying that. If you serve soup, this is one of the regular ones, like it's just flat. The reason why this exists is because if you're having chicken noodle soup or just any kind of soup really, sometimes if you're using any kind of like olive oil or anything on it, the olive oil sort of sits on top of the soup and obviously sometimes you don't want to pick up like a full spoon of olive oil, right? Let's mix it a little bit and let's say I'm trying to serve someone some soup. So I would go and just pour it into a bowl. And as you can see, like you obviously we get the soup, but we also get a lot of that olive oil layer on top. It's kind of annoying that my chicken soup and the olive oil are all the same color, but you get the idea. It's got so much oil that America is gonna invade my kitchen. So this invention was created in a way that when you serve soup, there's also a regular side, which is similar to the original one. And one of these sides is supposed to filter the fat. So you're supposed to pour the soup and then the fat will all stay in one of the sides. So we've got a lot of fat in this. Like the top layer is basically all fat. So, I'm gonna be careful, I'm gonna pour it out, and then we're gonna do this again. We haven't done a perfect job, but the difference, it's not perfect. If you're truly that concerned about health reasons and you're like, I don't want any oil on my food, I guess you could just, you would just leave it out. So, I don't think this is gonna stick because it doesn't work the way I would have wanted it to. It's a little bit like my personality. There's always room for improvement. Oh man. I will honestly consider myself lucky if I can survive this next one. It doesn't have any name, or I mean it does, but everything's in Chinese, like I obviously can't read it. I am fascinated by it, but I am also very, very scared about it. This is a see-through cooking pot. And like, I don't think you guys fully understand. The whole thing 
is made of glass. This has to be a terrible idea. Okay, this was actually popular apparently at some point in like the 70s. I don't know, I'm making up a date, but this was popular at some point. There was apparently like a rumor. I don't know if this is actually real, but I don't think it is. That one of these blew up and killed some poor person was using it. Even though this is technically safe, no one really uses glass hands and pots. I've looked this up before because obviously for my videos, how cool and how interesting would it be to use these to like make food because you'd be able to see what's actually going on on the inside. So if anyone works with food or is fascinated by the process at like a science level, like I am, this is so much fun, right? Like you'd think this is genius. Now, it's really suspicious that no one is really mass producing these. No one is actually buying them. We're gonna test it out, but it's not great that on the Amazon page where I bought this, there were photos of some of these broken. It is important to notice before one of you guys goes and explodes one of these, you're not supposed to use this on like an electrical induction kind of surface. You're actually supposed to use it on fire, which is so much worse. It's like cooking on a glass. Okay, so we're gonna make some, I was thinking like some bacon omelette, something easy like that, because this is obviously a very small size. They do have bigger ones, but they are expensive. That's why I got the smallest one. If it works, how beautiful is it that we can see things cooking in real time, like watching this bacon render in real time. As usual, safety is my priority. I am not playing any games here. I want this to go viral, but not that badly. I can honestly say that I've never been more scared in my entire life. It feels so wrong. I guess I could just leave it on and run away. Maybe I'll remove the lid. Oh my God. It is fascinating to look at, but this is gonna blow up. I am so scared. Is glass non stick? Things no one's ever asked ever. Oh my god. This looks so wrong! It's burning! I'm gonna crack an egg in it. It is really interesting to look at this, right? If I wasn't fearing for my life, this would be honestly really cool to look at. I know this is a life or death situation, but I just can't skip salt and pepper. Like, this is actually okay to touch? That's so weird! Let's carry on cooking our eggs. Ooh, got a bit of... Ooh. It cooks pretty quickly, actually. So this is where we're at with the situation. We did it, we survived, and we cooked scrambled eggs in a transparent pot. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie guys, everything about this was pretty good. Super non-stick, even though obviously bacon is a very fatty food, but it didn't stick at all, even the eggs. The handle didn't get hot, which doesn't make any sense, right? How it's made of glass. I think the reason why this isn't more popular and you don't see a lot of this is just because we're not used to it yet. Mark my words and come back to revisit this video in like, five years time, I think this will be popular very soon. I think this is gonna start, you, you, we're gonna start to see these everywhere. I think this next invention is basically competing with a waffle maker, like a pancake maker. It is called a Diablo, a toasted snack maker. It's got a great look to it, but from a first look already, I think I already know the problem, the reason why people are not buying it. It's really interesting because I honestly think it's got everything going in its favor. This should be the next waffle maker. It looks better than a waffle maker. Two layers of extra strong coating for scratch resistant non-stick cooking. So why is this not more popular? Is it because it's difficult to use? It basically creates these pockets. It's basically like a hot pocket, really. It doesn't say what the outside is supposed to be. Like I still, when I was buying this stuff for this video, I couldn't figure it out. Is this a tortilla wrap? Or is it bread? Open the Diablo and build your snack. Close the Diablo and trim away the edges. I think that's basically it, but we're gonna test it out. Wait a minute, my bread doesn't really fit here. This is weird, this is weird. Sometimes products have too much instructions. I think this one doesn't have enough instructions. So we're gonna put some pepperoni in it. This would be everywhere on TikTok if it works. So my guess is this, this is not gonna work. So this is, I guess, it. And then the instructions literally say to close it and then trim the excess. Is this truly how it's meant to be used? First of all, it's kind of awkward to just remove this. Like most people are not okay with food waste like that. You kind of lost me. I don't feel great 
great about wasting things. This makes me feel like I should be making a regular sandwich. I don't know if you can see, but there's a bit of bread there that I just can't seem to get out. There's even a bit of pepperoni stuck in there. Positives are that you can use this on anything, including like an induction. Why is this not working? Something seems to be wrong. This is not recognizing it in the induction. Turns out the Diablo doesn't really work in induction, so I'm gonna have to put this in fire. I'm gonna cook it five minutes on each side, and let's see what happens. It was really quick, it was easy, so let's see. Okay. We could have left it a little bit longer. It just doesn't look as toasty as the image, so hopefully it's toastier on the other side. Well, that's one way to do it. It looks good. I wanna hate on it, but it's actually like, it's crispy. I feel like their main problem comes from the trimming and the edges, but let me see if it's cheesy. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. Like it's cheesy, it's gooey. It's a sandwich. It is a sandwich with extra steps at the end of the day. And honestly, for me, the reason why I wouldn't use it, it's because of the edges. But it just annoys me that it's so intentional and such a crucial part to make this. I'm highly suspicious that that's the reason why this didn't really make it. For this next one, things might get a little bit aggressive, so we wanna be safe. I'm not gonna make fun of this one because I actually think this is genius. These are basically attachments that you can attach to your screwdriver. With these little tools, your dishwashing is about to get a whole lot easier. Let me attach one of the big ones. I love it already. This is already my favorite one in this whole video. Imagine that on your back to get rid of all the dry skin. Ooh. It most likely get rid of the whole layer. Do you know when something is really crusty and it just, there's no way to get rid of it? By the way, this was a lot of hard work. I've been working on these. These plates have been my science experiment for the last three days. Apparently what makes a stain really difficult to clean, basically high fat and high sugar content. If you've got these two things and it goes crusty, it's really difficult to clean, even with any dish soap. I really did an incredible job here. That looks like toxic. This one was originally a uh, chocolate frosting. I think this might be the easiest one to clean up because it's still a bit sticky. So I think I'm gonna use the smaller one so we can really see. Dish number one, we're gonna try the chocolate one because I think this one will be easy to clean. Hmm, interesting. Let's try with some soap. It works, but it's not as magical as you would have thought. And this is a really good stain. Let's try with the tomato sauce. So far, I'm pretty underwhelmed with this. This is literally splashing <laughs> my whole kitchen. I don't know if you guys can see. I think this one actually works. We haven't even used water yet. Okay, that's a lot better. I think we need to get the big one because this is not... Oh, shoot. We haven't even managed to get to the bottom of it yet. Also my therapist. I think I'm bleeding because this is so powerful. This literally splashed my whole kitchen. I don't know if you guys can see, but like everything is brown here. It kind of worked for the tomato sauce, but for the other two stains, even though they were really exaggerated, like we didn't even manage to get to the bottom of it. I would still have to let it soak overnight and then use this after, which I could just use a regular sponge or whatever it is. So I'm never gonna use this again. Out of everything in this video, I think this one is probably the one that is the most common, like the closest to being an everyday gadget used by people, a hamburger presser. So this is supposed to help you um, press your burgers into like a perfect kind of like McDonald's shape. I actually think that at least like three of you guys must own one of these at home. It's pretty easy to use, I think. So whenever I make burgers at home, I just, I wouldn't want them to look too perfect. You kind of want that homemade look. And I think that might be the reason why this is not wildly popular. Comes with a little parchment paper. It doesn't fit perfectly, but I feel like that's good enough. So I'm gonna grab some of the meat. This is my very own burger mixture. I use almost 50% breadcrumbs. Why? Because I love it that way and I'm not here for judgment. I'm gonna grab another piece of parchment paper. I'm gonna put it on top and we're gonna press it. It's kind of like making coffee. One of the reasons why I love fast food burgers is because they're so thin. I know some people like them thick. You don't need to make that much strength. I'm just doing it um, to 
be dramatic. So I guess we remove this now. You could even use this to freeze. That's maybe what the parchment paper is for. It looks pretty, it almost looks like a McDonald's cheeseburger. So I'm gonna put it in here. I could be wrong about this, but it's looking really good. Like this is not something that I needed or wanted in my life, but I like it. For like a second here, this was looking really good. And then suddenly, once I flipped it, it started to become, Maybe it's because this is 80% breadcrumbs. Out of the inventions that we've tested so far, I think this one has a serious potential to like become a really popular thing, even if it's just more of a niche product, like maybe for barbecues. It does look a little bit like a McDonald's burger. Like it's quite difficult sometimes to get burgers to stay at this thinness and not break, and they're holding pretty well. So I don't know if this is like a product for the masses of people, but this is definitely something that I would buy. And I think a lot of people would as well. I have to confess something because this this next one, from the moment I bought it until right now, this has become increasingly popular. I keep seeing this everywhere. I think Starbucks makes their own ones internationally. This is a set of doubled walled cappuccino glasses. And I think they make this now in mugs. It's really taking off right now. I wouldn't say that it's made it mainstream. If you don't know this product, you might be thinking, is this just a very aesthetically pleasing mug? But this is actually really cool and super purposeful if it works. I've been eyeing them on Amazon for a while and I just didn't have an excuse. And no, I've got them. When you make a coffee, a tea, a drink on a regular mug, not too long ago, I still lived with my parents. So trust me, I know how it is. Normal people use coasters, not to ruin like a wood table, a surface, even like things like stone sometimes gets ruined from a really hot mug. This basically got a double wall. So there's a wall on the outside and a wall on the inside. And there's basically like nothing in between and the heat is supposed to not transfer. So you don't need to use a coaster because the bottom of the mug it stays cold, but it's safe to use directly on surfaces. You never have to use a coaster ever again. So I'm gonna just make the coffee like I usually make it. This is very, very exciting. And we're gonna get our coffee. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's like the coffee is floating already. Do you see how the milk on camera just looks like a regular mug, but I'm gonna show you like a close up. It is 4 a.m. and I really shouldn't be drinking this, but I will. It's the gradient for me. Thank you very much. Did I just say thank you to a coffee machine? So the bottom of it, it's literally cold, like not even warm. There's zero heat transfer, which is incredible. I'm speechless. This one doesn't make as much sense as the other ones in this video because this is already becoming increasingly popular. This is just genius. It's so wrong that it tastes so hot and the bottom is so cold. At a first look, this next one, it just basically looks like a butter knife, but it's actually got a specific use. Why do they make these things so difficult to open? Why do I need scissors to open my scissors? Why do I need a knife to open my knife? It doesn't make any sense. So here we go. It looks like a butter knife, literally is a butter knife, but it's got that little tip there. On Amazon, I could already find like three different companies who do this exact same design because it's a butter knife. It doesn't have any serrated uh, edges. I think that's to make it spreading easier. The curved edge is actually supposed to help you. I'm gonna have to scoop out some peanut butter because this one is brand new. We've scooped up some peanut butter and now there's basically like a ring on top. Do you see how there's a bit where there's nothing? And then there's a little bit of peanut butter just on top. So you can scoop out the peanut butter normally, but also you put it here in that little corner and then you twist it and it's supposed to help you clean up the whole corner. I've never been able to get to that corner. The knife gets in all those little corners and all you have to do is literally spin it. It's so, so easy to use. So if you buy peanut butter and this is the shape of the jar, this was really cheap. Personally, I find it useful. I don't think this is gonna be very popular. I don't know if anyone else is gonna find this as interesting and useful as me, but I definitely will. Like, I don't think you guys understand how many dishes I wash after filming a video. Like. If you have an idea of it being really bad, it's so much worse. It's a jumbo cutlery drainer and it's basically, I mean, the design of it is so cute. 
that's an elephant. I'm immediately sold. When you go to Ikea, sometimes they've got these cups with little holes to put the cutlery after you wash it to drain. You have to put it next to the sink and even then sometimes there's like splashes of water from it draining into the counter directly. So with this, this has got a little hole and it's going to dry the cutlery but also drain it directly into the sink. This is genius. This would also be genius for toothbrushes. I think I just came up with something. I don't think anyone washes dishes as much as me, but I can already tell this is useful. Let's say we finished washing this. All right, I've done a really terrible job of washing these, but I just want to see, maybe this cutlery is not too wet. Maybe this is gonna just take time. Should we just... <laughs> it works. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Most of the inventions in this video, pretty terrible. I don't think many of them will succeed, maybe two or three, but overall, it's not looking great. Stay tuned for part two.